Hey everyone, what about here and welcome to the Iron Oath. Out tomorrow, I got uh, one day early access from the developers who were kind enough to send me a copy. It is a tactical RPG where you're leading a band of mercenaries going around doing quests and so on and so forth. There's a main campaign, but you don't really need to do it. Anyway, we're going to be the soup lads. Let's see flagged sigils. Do we got anything that looks particularly soupy here? Uh, not really, no. We're gonna go with that one. What colors do we want? Is there like... There's no pink. I'm not surprised or terribly disappointed. I'm a little disappointed. All right, where's my... Sh Here we go. I like the chevrons. What colors can we pick? Ooh, that one's... That's striking. Six out of 15 is solid. Yeah, let's do six. I'll have to change my main design color. I might want to even pick something. Let's pick something else that actually fits. I liked the sword with the light lightning. There we go. Sigil color. White, or I'm thinking just yellow. There we go. Okay, skip prologue mission. No thank you. Iron Man off and choose a difficulty. Uh, let's see, so we've got a couple different ones. Ooh, custom. So adventurers, new to Iron Oath or turn-based tactical RPGs, good place to start. Start with extra money, fewer enemies have less HP than other difficulties in dungeons. Time mod, new time mods every 20 rounds. Battle hardened, warlord, or custom. This is interesting. Here's the thing. I don't mind difficulty. Or enemy health or attack power. Time mod frequency, I'm gonna turn that up. I don't know what that matter means. Here's the thing though, mercenary salary rate. I kind of want to just go like full ham here. What is the maximum, 250? All right, let's go ham. I like it when my characters level up really fast. That probably is gonna end up meaning I'm hella broken. Uh, but at the same time, like I like challenging battles, but I don't like grind. Grind is the killer for me and so if I can mitigate that at all, I'd be a happy camper. Let's just do this. It's obviously going to be easier, but I'm here to just check the game out and see as much of it as possible in the first, you know, hour or so that I can get in. And then if I feel particularly compelled, we'll come back for a much more grueling campaign. Or the soup lads will uh, just become superheroes of the realm and kick some dragons in, which honestly, I, after the last couple of years, I'm just like big on, hey, fun, easy modes as opposed to grueling but I'm pretty sure that's the exact opposite of what most people are looking for with the Iron Oath. So I totally respect that. I just want to kick some dragons in the teeth. So in an era all but forgotten, the gods once lived alongside humanity at the heart of Salium. However, an unknown cataclysmic event plunged the world into a dark age. History was lost to time and so too were the gods. In their absence, a rebuilding humanity was left to contend with the emergence of a great being of darkness from the void. Every few decades, in an event called the Scourge, the dragon's arrival would bring death and disease to the land. Those affected by the dragon's blight would lose their minds and bodies as they slowly became abominations of flesh, an outcast to society known as the Blighted. Despite centuries of effort from the Vanguard Order and the realm's greatest heroes, no lasting victory against the dragon could be achieved. Humanity has now come to accept the inevitability of the Scourge as part of life, enduring or in some cases thriving despite it. With whispers of an impending scourge circulating, you and your company find yourselves in a burial crypt not far from the city of Andalion, Andalion, El Andalon, sorry. A simple retrieval of smuggled supplies, or at least what that's what your employer had promised. And this is the one with a really slick looking pixel art you might have seen around. There's a couple of other games kind of in the same vein that also looks similar. I know Loot River, which is a completely different game style, I think, um, that also has slick pit pixels. And then there's also Songs of Conquest. Yeah, this looks good. Ooh, I'm looking forward to this. These guys look sick. Damn grave robbers, stay sharp. No doubt his companions will have heard that. Everyone stands still. Tensions rising as they grip their weapons tight and scan the room for further hostiles. You hear a muffled shout from someone in an adjacent corridor likely directed towards their now deceased associate the sound of quickening footsteps soon follows and the three fi and three figures burst through a doorway at the far side of the room shit should i go and alert the others 
Yurik shakes his head, eyes fixed on the enemy. No time for that. We have no choice but to fight. Begin combat. Okay, so if we the battle with WSD or Middle Mouse. Whoa, that's a little zippy. Okay. On their turn, each character can move as many hexes as their movement set allows. By moving into the green hex, they can still perform an action afterwards. To cover more ground, they can sprint, but ends their turn. You can swap places with an ally by moving onto their location. Swapping is useful for setting up attacks or getting an ally out of harm's way. By holding shift, you can draw a custom movement route. To undo a movement, click the undo button on the hotbar or E. If you take damage or trigger a stage hazard, you'll be unable to undo Brad. Okay, if you don't have a desirable action to perform, you can delay your character's turn into the end of the round by hitting the wait button. Alternatively, you can end a character's turn by using the guard action, which provides a temporary bonus to defense and evasion. Click the wait button and delay Stormcaller's turn. Your character abilities have a limited number of charges available, so it's important to plan wisely and use them effectively. Charges can be restored by camping or by using certain provisions. With the enemy advancing on us, we can set up a trap using the Pyromancer's Return to Cinder ability on the indicated hex. Rad. Normally I don't like tutorials, but this one looks slick. And if there's light plot to go with it, it's not bad. And this one, while handholdy, it doesn't feel bad. It doesn't feel stupid, and it's very quick. As you can see, it's important to pay attention to any potential hazards when positioning your units. Some units are able to push or pull guys, move the Pugilist into position, use his Crescent Wave ability to push an enemy into the pit. Oh. Oh, that's... That's spicy. Why? Oh, no. He doesn't... Okay. He takes a ton of damage, but that's it. Okay. Every character on the battlefield exerts a zone of control on Hexes adjacent to, adjacent to their position. Unit cannot leave the zone without suffering an attack of opportunity. I love D&D logic sometimes. Okay, each character has a basic attack which has unlimited uses. While unique abilities are guaranteed to hit their target, basic attacks are subject to an accuracy and evasion check. Oh, I like that. No more whiffing special moves because, you know, accuracy. Whereas this makes a lot of sense. You know, want to conserve your stuff? More of a risk. Okay, most attacks and abilities are subject to line of sight check. When targeting a red eye indicates that there's no line of sight, while a yellow eye indicates partial line of sight. Large obstacles such as pillars can block line of sight entirely, and when a character has no vision of an enemy, they're unable to tar target them. Smaller obstacles such as barrels, crates, or characters will partially obscure line of sight, and 50% less damage from attacks. By taking cover behind small obstacles, you can look over the obstacle and gain full vision of the enemy, while remaining only partially visible in return. Stormcaller's Conduit ability can devastate a single enemy from range, but it takes a few turns to channel. You can see where a channel will finish by looking at the blue indicator. Okay, so... Blast the Archer. With the nearest enemy stunned, the Pyrolancer can safely move past their zone. Okay. Oh, because yeah, he fell into the pit. So, I guess we're just running this guy up here. Where's the channel? Is it this one? Maybe. Yeah, I guess it's probably whatever his next action is. We've definitely taken some damage there, but he is freaking dead. Alright, rad. Okay, morale. Your pugil pugilist just killed an enemy and gained morale. Morale is displayed by the white bar on each character's portrait. It represents their mood and attitude towards the current mission. Morale is gained and lost through various combat triggers. Landing a killing blow will increase morale, while suffering a critical strike from an enemy will lower it. A character with low morale will take longer to recover from a mission, and will lose loyalty towards the company. Targets are considered flanked when you oc occupy two opposing hexes. All attacks against flank targets deal extra damage and cannot miss. Okay, so we want to flank. And no attack of opportunity, because we haven't actually left the threatened squares. Very Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, time to end this. Because we just hit him. And bam. Yep, looks slick. We get some scrap. Yurik sheaths his weapon, gazing around the room to make sure all are unharmed. Everyone all right, all right then? Bernard gestures at some blood on Yurik's arm. Never mind us, you certainly looked better. Yurik looks down at his injury and scoffs. What, this? He wipes at the blood, making a smeary mess of it. Nothing time won't heal. I'll be fine. You turn as a familiar voice rings out distantly behind you, though the words are unclear. Is that you, Vaughn? Vaughn dashes into the room and stops, kneeling over to catch his breath. Looks up with a relieved smile. 
Glad to see you're all, all still with us. We heard the fighting. Figured you can handle it, but I didn't want to take the chance. And the others? Bon points it back in the direction he came from. Torn and the rest are still searching. Surely there are better places to stash supplies, but I suppose those smugglers had little choice. At least we're getting paid well to retrieve them. We've been in worse, it, worse situations. Aye, ah, that we have, boss. I was just hoping my last job would be free of surprises. Can't fault you for wanting out, but I wish you'd reconsider. Vaughn smiles faintly and places a firm hand on Yurik's shoulder. This life takes a toll, my friend. I've seen more death than any man should. His face goes dark for a brief moment, remembering all the friends you've lost. Your trusted advisor, Alaric, steps out from beside you with hands raised, bringing a halt to the conversation. All right, now. There's plenty of time for talk later. It's going to take a while to scour this place, even with the others' help. Right. You better get back to Torn and the rest before they find themselves lost. Watch your backs. There may be more of those thieves in here. Or worse yet. Bon looks back over his shoulder, nodding in an acknowledgement. Let's keep moving. Most actions you take while exploring a dungeon will cost time. The passage of time can have harsh consequences and is represented by the time meter in the bottom right. We should begin exploring. Well, I'm glad I scaled this up a little bit. Let's see. Scouting can be useful in order, order to spot enemies, traps, and other surprises that may await you. By scouting an enemy location, you prevent them from being able to ambush you, but it does cost extra time. So it should be used sparingly. Okay, scouts. Oh, no enemies. When interacting with an exploration event, you'll often have multiple choices. Some actions require a stat check. Cool. You spot a discarded pack up ahead. Likely dropped in haste by the grave robbers when you alerted them. Don't expect to find much of value, but it's not like they'll be coming back to claim it. So we can loot it, loot it. So rash and cautious. Okay. Small health potion, bandage, tools, got it. Here's the thing. All character gear comes with a durability rating. With enough use, it'll break and turn into scrap. When an item loses all durability while on a mission, it'll not break until the mission is complete. Useful. I was hoping to actually use that med kit. Oh, provisions can be used in and out of combat. Okay, so it's down here. So, bandage. Stabilize injuries, dispel bleed, and restore a small amount of health. Or just 200 health. Okay, I'm going to use the healing potion on him. Just because. We also have Dawn, which is a heal spell. We'll leave that for later. I probably should have actually used the heal spell first. Now that I'm thinking about it. Because those I get back. Unless that's an ability I can use mid-combat. At which point, no, I want to hold on to that. Okay, we got ambushed. I probably should have scouted, but... Oh, well. Okay, cleansing conditions. You can dispel negative conditions from your characters with cleansing abilities or by using an antidote item. Not all, or... all harmful effects can be cleansed, however, such as injuries or flanked debuff. Enemies caught you by surprise and ambushed you. When ambushed, the deployment phase is skipped and your party acts last. By walking blindly into the enemy, you always risk... Of... Uh, run the risk of being ambushed. You can prevent this by scouting ahead beforehand. And would have let us ambush them. Okay, so nothing too much. So what do we have? Fist of Fury. Dash to an empty cell and strike an adjacent enemy twice. Or kick. Here's a question. What if I kick an enemy into another enemy? Yup. That's good stuff. Might have knocked him down? Okay, so who is her? So she's got Dawn. Okay, so that is the healing ability, applying damage shield to herself and her target the last two rounds, range of two. Okay, so I could do some damage here. But there's not much for it. We also have move, undo, flee, guard, some other stuff. I think we're just going to pile drive these suckers. I'm a little bit worried about my mage though. I might want to move him up here. And what do we got? Conduit. On the scout? On the scout. Okay, what else do we have? Return to Cinder. Mark a cell with a fire trap. Well, what does she have? 
Blade Dancer. Can I... Can I see what she has? No. Damage to two targets in a row. Secondary target takes less damage. And Blazing Lance. Damage is in a single target doing burn. Otherwise, we could just hit one of these guys. Uh, let's see. Who's up next? He's up next. Because if I hit this guy, he just dies. However, if I do this... Oh, in a row. I see, so it's a line attack. Ow. Or not? Let me go here and just punch him. Oh, didn't kill him. Okay, let's just kill her. Whatever she's got planned, I want nothing to do with it. There was a trap. What is this? Falling rocks. Okay, so I just want to let her be there. Okay. How bad are the falling rocks? Kind of bad. Seems like they've got a stun. Well, let's just hit this guy in the back. And I can't do too much. But it looks like it's my advantage at this point. Or I could just miss. That's also possible. Another bandage. And looks like we level up. When a character earns enough EXP, they will level up and receive attribute and ability points. There's six attributes that you can put points into. Physique... Finesse, toughness, conviction, insight, and mind. Each one contributes differently to your character's combat statistics. Each class specializes in two that increase their power. This is denoted by the bronze star next to their attributes. Ability points are used to upgrade or alter their effects. Ooh. Uh, let's see. By leveling up, you'll be able to unlock new abilities for each character. Each class has six abilities unlocked, though they can only equip four at a time. You're not required to spend your points right away. Good to know. Well, what's physique get, get us? Crit damage, health, and evasion. Finesse is accuracy, crit chance, and evasion. Honestly, anything that gets me health right now seems good. Just being really beefy means longer duration. Now, could I unlock any of these? Maybe. Strike an enemy and warp directly behind them for a second strike that pushes them away? Hmm. Target self or a single ally. Cleanse abilities. Uh, and stabilize all, all injuries. Increase evasion, de uh, defense, and power by 50% for three rounds. That's actually not bad. And then healing trance. Heals himself and adjacent allies for... F oh, heals himself and then adjacent allies are healed for half of that. Otherwise, I can also just upgrade these. Which, okay. So we can increase the damage. Sunder armor. Extra potency. Pushes removed but hits surrounding targets. Crit bonus. Supersonic kick, pushback two, locked in the early access build. Fair. I I kind of like battle instincts though. Can I unlock it? Maybe. Oh wait wait wait. Because increasing defense and power by fifty percent for three rounds sounds kind of handy. Uh, let's see. Potency, Battle Instinct, or Duration. Level up and unlock the ability. Wait, I haven't unlocked... Oh. Ability points available. Oh, wait, no. Hmm. I guess it's just not going to let me. Let's see, Dash Range or Cleave. Killing blow is dealt on the first, first hit to strike an adjacent enemy. Additional charge for the ability if I want to go this direction. Or this one. So I guess let's just do that for the time being. What's throat punch? Oh. No, I'm just... I'm gonna... No. I guess I'll just do that for the time being. It looks like everybody might have leveled up here. Okay, so Bernard. He's got Conduit and Arc Lightning. Ooh. All adjacent targets for 75 damage. I don't know. I feel like Conduit is a little bit better. Channel speed up. And then potency. Because I want to just be able to hyper nuke people at a distance. 
And she's got Dawn and Safeguard. Let's go Dawn. Invigorate. Extra speed. Charges. Two Radiant stacks from the Guardian's passive ability and extra charges. Let's go for that. The more they, the more we can heal, the better. Also, these characters still need to level up. Uh, high? Abilities? Oh, we never got their stats. Whoops. Uh, attri attributes? Abilities? Oh, here we go. Insight. Critical damage and perception or critical chance and accuracy. I'll just push those. I guess the other guy just hasn't leveled up yet. Okay, so conviction, defense, and morale, critical damage, and perception. I'm just going to go for survivability. That seems like the way to do it. Oh, we got something here. The signal halt is a faint and distant rumbling becomes audible, steadily growing louder with each passing moment. You look up, noticing cracks forming in the ceiling as small rocks break off and fall to the floor around you. You're bumps against you and tugs your arm, urging you to run. It's Kaven, we need to move. Deciding, or breaking into the stride behind the rest of your party, you steal a glance back to see the corridor collapsing in a cascade of falling stone. You cross the threshold into another chamber, diving to the ground as the path behind is quickly closed off by the crumbling structure. A cloud of dirt and dust obscures your vision, but the rumbling and crashing comes to a halt as the last few pieces of debris can be heard tumbling into position. Everyone okay? You look around as the dust settles. Aside from a few coughing fits, everyone seems to be unscathed. The hell was that? An earthquake? Might have been. Or those grave robbers tried to force their way into some place they shouldn't. Yurik inspects the caved-in passage, lightly kicking some rubble to the ground. Regardless, we'll have to find a way out. What of the others, and the supplies they're supposed to locate? Yurik places a reassuring hand on Bernard's shoulder. Vaughn... Vaughn and them are on the other side of the crypt. I suspect they're fine, or at least I hope. Our priority is to find them. Hopefully they've retrieved the supplies. We could do with a little luck. Okay, so I've got... Uh, we're kind of running out of time, so how much... How injured is... Are our characters? Ah, uh, not very. I don't know what the weird fog indicator is. Okay, your path is blocked by a pile of rubble from the recent cave-in. Yurik steps forward and climbs atop to gauge the se severity of the blockage. Ah, it's not so bad. I can see a path, a uh, clear path ahead. Just need to move enough of this rubble so we can squeeze through. He turns, looking down to address you. Any ideas? My hand, blast a hole with magic, or hand Yurik a shovel. With an affirming nod, Yurik grasps the shovel and begins to dig, soon clearing a path just wide enough for everyone to fit through. Your party crawls through the gap in the rubble and comes out the other side, sliding down a pile and back onto solid ground. You see the flickering light of a torch being cast into the room, from connecting hall, illuminating more of your surroundings as it nears. Your party forms up, preparing for combat as the flames bear around the corner. Easy now, it's just me. I thought the whole damn place was going to come down on top of us. The structure groans and rumbles for a moment, and he glances around the corner with some concern. Might yet. York motions back towards the collapse. That whole section is caved in. We need to find a new way out of here once we're done. Figured as much. Torn and the others are already set to finding one. I take it you haven't found the supplies yet either. Yurik sh slowly shakes his head. Unfortunately not. Let's hope they're not buried in stone. Regroup with Torn and secure an exit, Vaughn. We'll find you when the job's done. Sure thing, boss. He quickly scans around your surroundings and leans in close, his expression turning deadly serious. There's something else. All that commotion has disturbed the dead within these walls. I've already put down a few of the bastards, but you best stay alert for more. Thanks for the warning. We'll tread carefully. Okay, we got a fight. Injury prone. One misstep or lapse in judgment is all it takes to get seriously hurt around here. One can only concentrate on so many things. Chance of incurring an injury has increased significantly. Ouch. Okay, so as you explore, the application of various time modifiers will present new challenges for you to overcome. With each time modifier applied, your party will slowly become unnerved and suffer small loss to morale. Due to these factors, it's important to be efficient and spend your time wisely. Neat. Dicey, but neat. Okay, deployment phase. Able to reposition party ahead of combat. Uh, let's see. Looks like they're just generally kind of around here. I'm going to move him up. Considering all of these guys are down here, though, we might want to... We might want to just bunch up down in this area. So here's the question. 
how do I do this? Uh, I've got rubble. Uh, okay. It's her and then him. So we're not going to get flanked here. So I'm going to go here. We're going to do a crescent wave kick. For a little bit of bonus damage. She hones her weapon. We take some damage. So she's got whatever. Can't do too much. I'm just going to put her here. We have Dawn. Nah, I'm just going to hit this guy. Nope. Dang. Ow. Ow. Okay. So I can wallop this guy. Or I can wallop this guy with fire. Now. Nah. I'm going to wallop this guy. What else do we have? We have Arc Lightning. How much HP does the Mage have? 435. He's actually kind of a tanky sucker. Because I might want to do an Arc... Uh, I don't want to do an Arc Lightning. Conduit. Let's just delete the... Uh, Let's just keep deleting that guy. So here's the problem. I've taken some hurts. Here's the thing. If I just kill that guy, hurt goes away. Never mind. Okay. Interesting. I'm going to just do a dawn on him. Because it doesn't look like she's threatened. Okay, there's the damage. Ow. Oh, we're not dead yet. That's kind of a good sign. Not a great one, though. And she's a little tougher. I could set her on fire. Nah, I should have just attacked her. Don't do Fist of Fury? Yep. Ow. Okay, so I might have to do some things. Oh yeah, Yurik is level 4. Alright, let's go... Nope, nope, nope. That's the wrong thing. I'm just gonna dump all my magic on making him less dead. Oh, this might be a resting spot. Yurk runs their hand along the wall of the interred dead, reading the inscription on each nameplate before moving on to the next. Stops at one, peering closer and double-checking the name, before turning with relief in his voice. This is the one we were told to look for, boss. About time. Let's hope the contacts are st contents are still intact. Reaching with both arms into the dark recess, Yurk firmly grabs hold of a coffin. It's ancient and rotting wood, creaking in protest. He gingerly slides the coffin partway open and pushes the lid aside, rummaging around briefly before pulling out the stash pack with care. Taking a peek inside to confirm the contact contents, he walks over to you and hands you off the bag. It's all there. No damage to the vials, from what I can tell. What does our employer want with them anyway? Alaric interjects, eager to share his knowledge on the matter. This here is a cure for the blight, or at least slows the process. The Vanguard keeps it tightly controlled, though, only treating those who pledge themselves to their order. As such, it's highly sought after on the black market. It's why our employer is paying us so well. At least our efforts haven't been wasted. Let's regroup with Vaughn and hope that they've found us an exit. Okay, so I've got some time. Don't look like we got any fights. But I'm injured enough that I don't want to get ambushed. I don't know what the crown is, but hopefully it's fine. Hear a sudden movement in the darkness head. Sound of bones rattling and scraping along the stone floor. Bright green eyes turn towards you and undead. And, then, and the undead being lets out a bone-chilling screech as it shuffles forward into the light of your torches. Moving faster than its size, an awkward gait would suggest was possible. Okay, so this one might be a bit of a doozy. And they're back further, which is a little worrying. We have an arbalist and some ghouls. They don't look like they're particularly big on ranged combat. Wait, where's he? Oh, he's here. I might want to just, uh, I might want to just kind of chill down here. There we go. 
Here's the thing. I'm gonna wait. Because part of it is I haven't used half of my abilities. Ow, that hurt. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, okay. So if I go here, we're potentially. Gonna get. Nah, it's fine. Okay, so we could hit either of those, or I could just hit this guy. Not this ability. Could we just hit and kill him? Oh, damn it. I'm just going to do that. Okay, what do we do? Same deal? If this is the end... Oh, revives in one turn. Oh, that was a waste. Some enemies have passive abilities. These undead skeletons are able to reanimate after being defeated. Uh, let's see. Target is to destroy the pile of bones. For both of them? Oh, boy. Well, that does the trick. Let's see. Get in here and just hit this guy. Oh, they do have the damage shield, though. Oh, did we get a crit? We did, but it wasn't a kill. Let's see. Nope, missed. Damn. Okay, she's got a bleed out. Bleed out. When a character's health drops to zero in combat, they'll enter a bleed out state. Health value will be replaced by a bleed-out pool. Persistent throughout the course of the dungeon. Drop by one on their turn from attacks suffered. Permanent death will occur when it's that. Okay, you can heal them with provisions such as a bandage. Okay, cool. So, I think I'm going to move here and kill. and provisions if I can use item bandage on her there we go 50 HP that said until we kill that archer we're not in a safe spot luckily we can just surround the archer please don't shoot her gosh darn it here if I knock it out hopefully it solves the problem Nope. Oh, right, because we actually have to kill it. All right, she's fine. We get some scrap. for the, She's fine for the moment. Right, let's keep investing in health. Is there anything, I'm not, anything I can get there is good. Okay. Oh, and now we can get an ability. All right, now let's go in here. Grab... Nope, undo. Let's grab duration. Because four rounds... Plus 50% all stats. That sounds good. Lightning strikes four times in a circular area. Eh. Target self for an ally. Increasing speed, movement, cleansing stats. Eh. Move to cell, maybe. Target to single self. Restore 15 morale over three turns. That's... Yeah, let's grab that, actually. But then we want to go back to conduit and give it an extra charge. Astrid. Uh, so what can we unlock? Damage and blind. Damage sing single target range two. Two targets in a row. Or root an adjacent target for one round, then channel five turns to do massive damage against them. Judgment. I don't know. I think I want to do blinding strike. That sounds kind of useful. And then we want to go back to this and make it better. Do we? Almost all of these are locked in the early access build, which is a little bit of a pain. I don't know, maybe we make this one a bit better. That's extra damage, we don't care. Let's go charges. Okay, he's still got an attribute point. A 
Let's see, Bernard, I believe, is our caster. I hope he is. She does not have much HP. We might want to just give her... What does defense do? <laughs> not much. I don't know. We might want to just invest in some physique on her just so she doesn't die. Okay, speaking of not dying... Freaking ouch. Oh. Increased post-mission fatigue. Good to know. Alright, let's get out of here. Your party comes to a standstill as muffled shouts and ringing steel reverberates down the corridor towards you. Yurik unsheaths his lance, motioning the rest of you forward as he breaks into stride, barreling towards the sound of battle. It must be the others. Hurry. Please give me full party? Nope. Yes. Looks like we've already got some teammates already here. This guy looks sick. I wonder if we're always going to only have four party members, or if that was it. With the last of the undead dealt with, Vaughn hails you across the chamber with a flick of his hand, a relieved smile forming on his face as he strides closer to meet you. Did you find it then? The exit's just beyond here. Been trying to keep it clear of the dead, but they just keep coming. A pile of bones near Torn's feet suddenly begins to rattle, and the eyes of a skull reignite. Eyes of a skull reignite in a bright in bright green as unseen forces attempt to reassemble the skeleton. Torn grunts and steps forward, crushing the skull beneath his heel and grinding it into a fine dust. Looks up with a satisfied grin. Took you long enough. Vaughn here was getting all worked up and thinking the worst. The crypt groans once more. The ground beneath you shaking ever so slightly. I don't expect this structure will hold out much longer, sir. We'd best not linger. Yurik raises his torch high, inspecting the ceiling above as, a sm as small petals begin to break away from it. Good advice, I reckon. We got what we came for. Let's not tempt fate. Alright, so injury recovery. After a mission, you'll want to seek treatment for any injuries your party might have incurred. When an injured character can still fight, injury penalties make them less effective. In order to fully recover, you must pay for their treatment at a city's infirmary. Some treat injuries require prompt treatment, otherwise they risk permanent damage or death. Okay, so she's got an arm injury. Uh, sustained 10% damage when blocking. And also a head injury, bruised neck, 10% damage from all attacks. Okay. And we got some loot and some other stuff, and yeah, we're gonna just have to probably go heal. At the last, as the last light of day begins to fade, you spot your company's camp not far ahead. The flickering flames of bonfires dancing against the dark darkening sky above the horizon. You stroll into camp. The celebrations of Vaughn's retirement are already well underway. After many hours of swapping stories and sharing drinks, all eyes fall on Vaughn as he steps atop a nearby crate with a drink in hand, raising his voice to pierce through the ruckus. Now you all know I'm not one for lengthy speeches, but I'd just like to say it's been an honor to fight alongside of each of you for over the years. Dare say that I even consider uh, you among my friends, he grins, met with a chorus of laughs and cheers. It hasn't been an easy road, but I've been a fortunate man. Not everyone gets out of the mercenary life on their own terms. Hope you all one day get the same chance. He raises his cup in a toast. To you, my friends, there's never been a finer company. You're here. The crowd responds with a burst of applause and cheers, enthusiastically raising their drinks and sending a shower of ale through the air. Your gaze is met by Vaughn as he points his cup towards you, and you nod your head in a friendly acknowledgement before turning about and striding off to find your tent. With the celebration continuing in your absence, you brush aside the flap to your tent and settle inside, discarding your weaponry and tossing it near your bedroll. You turn to find Alaric in your presence, no doubt eager to discuss business. I hope I'm not disturbing you, sir. I was on my way to pay the horses a visit and prepare us for tomorrow's travel. He gestures the pack slung around your shoulder, containing the contraband you recently received. It's probably best if I stored those vials in one of our carriages. You gently slide the pack off your shoulder and place it in his upturned hand. Well then, I'd best take care of this. He nods respectfully and turns, pushing aside the tent flap with an outstretched arm and briskly walked out into the night. You turn your attention to your desk, its surface covered with disorganized papers and maps. Illuminated by the faint glow of a candle, pulling up a stool, you sit down and begin to pore over one of the maps, charting out tomorrow's course. From outside, the sounds of laughter and poorly played music drifts into your tent. After some time, with celebrations audibly winding down, you step outside your tent 
and into the, into the cool evening air. Vaughn approaches your side, mounted atop a horse. Despite the smile on his face, there's a trace of sadness in his eyes. It's time then? Aye. He leans down and pats the side of his horse. Got my saddle lo loaded up and figured I'd sneak out without making a big fuss. He rises from his seat and dismounts, turning to face you with one hand extended. Just wanted to say thanks, boss, for everything. You return the gesture with a smile, gripping his hand and giving it a firm shake. Any chance I can convince you to stay? He steps back and chuckles. You'd have asked that last week, maybe, but this last job cleared any doubts I had. I've survived this long. I reckon I'd be a fool to press my luck any further. Fair enough, my friend. We'll always have a place for you if you change your mind. You hear a shout and turn to see Yurik stepping towards you, his young nephew in tow. Sorry to interrupt, he tilts his head, gesturing behind him, but Gedrick here wanted to see you off. That's so. Vaughn smiles, stepping towards the boy and slapping a hand down on his shoulder. I know we haven't finished your training, but your uncle's more than capable of finishing the job. I know that. He looks up, conveying admiration. I'm gonna miss you, though. Aye, Vaughn grins, reaching out to ta uh, tossle the boy's hair. And I you. I've half a mind to send him with you, less danger on a farm, and gods know your old bones could use the help. Ha! <laughs> There's a few good years in me yet, but you're both welcome to visit any time. He exhales deeply, stealing a glance towards the road. I'd best be going then. Take care of yourselves, would you? He nods farewell, turning towards his horse and hoisting himself into the saddle. Clicking his heels, the horse trots off, and you watch him disappear into the dark of night, illuminated only by the moonlight above. You and Yurik glance back at the sound of approaching footsteps to find Torin wedging himself between the two of you, his heavy hands firmly planted in each of your on each of your shoulders. Company won't be the same without him, I'm afraid. Indeed it won't. As Yurik and Torin take their leave, you look around the camp, surveying the aftermath of the festivities. Outside, from a few inebriated men and women who remain slumped by the fires, it seems most have turned in for the night. With days of travel yet ahead, you think it wise to follow suit. You bolt upright in your sleep, awakened by the blares of a horn from somewhere near camp, an alarm being raised, the sounds of frenzy battle, to battle are all around you. You scramble out of your bedroll, taking up a nearby sword. Lark bursts into your tent, an orange glow briefly visible behind him as the tent flap is flung aside. Sir, why under attack? Winded, he takes a few deep breaths. There's no warning. The horses, the carriages. He raises his hands, trembling with frustration. Everything's being taken. We need to regroup with the others. Have you seen Yurik? A lark wipes the sweat from his brow, shaking his head. Could, could not find him. With his nephew, I hope. You meet a lark's eyes and nod in agreement. With a firm grip on your sword, you step past him, reaching your other hand towards the tent flap and preparing to step outside. You glance over your shoulder. Let's move. Stay close. You emerge from your tent, head on a swivel as you attempt to survey the situation. The camp is almost entirely ablaze, the heat from the smoke stinging your eyes and obscuring your vision. You make your way ahead, your feet suddenly catching on something as you fall forward and scramble to stay upright. Recovering, you steal a glance backward at the obstruction. One of your companions dead. An arrow flies by you, narrowly missing, but finding a target nonetheless. A lark screams out in pain behind you, legs collapsing under him. As he falls hard to the ground, you turn back, reaching out a hand to pull him up, but he waves you off. Leave me. I'll be no use in a fight. You follow his gaze down to his leg, a blood-covered arrow stuck through it. Go! You turn and continue onward, staying low to the ground as you move. Eyes scanning for any friendly faces through the smoke. Now, 50 yards ahead, you spot four of your companions through the haze, huddled together with weapons drawn against an overwhelming number of assailants. Sucking air into your burning lung lungs, you urge your legs forward in a desperate attempt to reach them. A figure suddenly appears from the corner of your eye, and in a flash of pain, the world goes dark. Well. Surrounded, referee's head whips around, searching frantically for any possible escape as the raiders edge closer. Beyond the ring of enemies, Torin and a few other familiar faces emerge from the darkness with bloodied weapons drawn. Though they don't seem inclined to make any urgent use of them. Oh. What are you waiting for, Torin? Help us! The raiders eye Torin as he confidently steps among them, each seemingly unconcerned by his presence, perhaps even emboldened by it. Sorry, friends. A twisted smirk forms at the corner of his mouth as he slides an arrow from his quiver. We'll make this quick. Eri! Referee glares at Torin with wild fury in their eyes, arms trembling as they level their weapons towards him. You damn traitors! Have you no honor? Torin scoffs. Honor achieves little in this world. Glancing sideways at his accomplices, he raises a hand, signaling them to attack. 
I trust you, Locke, can handle the rest. Spare no one. Oh, I'm actually fighting here. Oh, baby, this does not look good. Well, what do we have? Ah, uh, let's see, so... Here's the thing. What can I do? Plus one dash, dash range. I'm gonna just rush here. Here's the thing. Can I dash? No, that's a cell. So let's just do battle instinct. I'm not betting on a win here. And she's wounded, which sucks. But if I can... Ah, oh, that's a crit. Ow. Okay, so if I move here... I'm gonna do Dawn on... him. I think we're boned. Is the real answer. I don't think there's much I can do about this, but... We'll see. Okay, I'm just gonna conduit that guy, see if I can take out one of them. Uh, let's see, and let's wait. I don't think she has the range. Okay, we miss. He gets close, ow. But we can delete that guy. Okay, so she has the home. Oh, which we want to go here for. Uh, I'm going to wait. They get closer. Actually is kind of a good thing. Oh boy, that's rough. Okay, if I attack, that's not enough. Gone, we have Blinding Strike. Yeah, because if I could kill her, but unfortunately, she's too much on support. Let's just blind him. Still can't kill. Here's the thing. Arc Lightning. Conduit. Rainfall. Or just a regular attack. Hit her. Yeah, because if I do that, we can take her out. This is going to hurt. I don't think we're living through this one. But you never know. I might pull it off. He's going to go over here. So I'm going to move here. And nope. We're just going to don ourselves. Okay, these guys being here is fine. Please don't move. Okay, if I conduit the archer, worth it. Might take some damage, but that's fine. Let's see, so if I do this, I can almost kill him. Let's see. I undo. A new movement. Okay, so we could potentially swap and do the kick. Okay. So I think our best bet is Fist of Fury. Almost kills him. Okay. We can, she, can, she can just get up here, kill him. Do some damage. Archer's gone. Now this fight is in our favor. So here's the question. Do I want to just... Fist of Fury this guy? Yeah. Please don't kill the mage. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, you know what? We're going to do a blinding strike on this guy. Keep him blind. Makes his life harder. And also, he doesn't do a whole lot of damage there. We actually won this. I'm kind of shocked. Probably could have conserved that. I still think we're going to lose. But at least we didn't lose this fight. Alright. How does this pan out? Opening your eyes, you find yourself sprawled on the ground with a mouthful of dirt and a throbbing ache in your head. Despite the ringing in your ears, you can hear a muffled voice calling out. A hand grips your shoulder and you jerk, to, jerk at the touch, clawing at the ground and scrambling on your back. Easy now. You exhale with relief as at the sight of Yurik leaning over you, the early morning light shining on his blood-spattered blood face and garments, straightens up and you grab hold of his, his extended arm, gripping tight as he pulls you upright. Regaining your senses, you look at the smoke, smoking remains of your camp. Anything not taken by the raiders has been taken by the fires. Not much left, is there? The bastards took everything. He closes his eyes, lowering his head and sighing deeply. It was Torin, sir. He betrayed us. Torin, are you sure? Yurik nods. Wasn't alone either. Damon, Inos, Nira. His fingers clench into trembling fists. All effing traitors. Through the anger, you notice a sadness in his eyes and realize suddenly that his nephew isn't present. Where's Gadric? Yurik glances down, shaking his head. Don't know for certain, but I fear he's dead. He sighs. I was with him when the attack started, but we ran into trouble. Told the boy to run, but... He pauses, staring blankly into the distance as you place a comforting hand on his shoulder. Don't remember much else, I'm afraid. Woke up to a lark, dragging me out, of, out from under a pile of bodies. Lark's alive. Are any others? Aye, he's alive. Managed to find a place to hide and patch himself up. Told him to, told him to stay off his feet. He snorts, waving a hand over the general area behind him. But he's out there limping around, trying to salvage what he can. Thankfully, there's a few others, too. Seems they managed to kill a whole group of the bastards. Brief smirk fades into a, gr a grim expression. I'm afraid that's all, though. You turn to see Alaric emerging from a half-burnt tent, limping your way and being helped along by the other survivors of your company. A relieved smile forms on all of their faces at the sight of you. Gods, we are glad to see you, sir. He glances at Yurik. Have you shared the news? I did. Alaric fumbles inside his coat, pulling out a few slightly scorched papers. I found some correspondence in one of their tents. They've been planning this for months, it seems. Referee mutters under their breath. Traitorous bastards. Any idea who they're working with? I'm afraid not. Certainly more than just a ragtag group of thieves. They were too well armed and too well organized. Yurik scoffs with disgust, leaning over to spit on the ground. A group of cowards, I say. Easy to achieve victory when half our troops passed out drunk. No doubt Torin and them were counting on that fact, the spineless pricks. Never did like Torin none. Always felt uneasy around him. Alaric furls his brow, a thought creeping into his mind. I can hardly stomach the notion, but could Vaughn have been involved? Yurik waves a dismissive hand. Not a chance. I know he and Torin got on well enough. But the man's as loyal as they come. I'm just glad he wasn't here for this. We've lost too much already. Regardless of who's involved, there's little we can do about it. At least for now. So what's our plan, bo boss? You know I'll follow you anywhere, but I promised my sister I'd looked after Gedrick. If he's somehow alive, I need to find him. And if he's not, well, pounds a fist into his other hand. Us putting those trainers into the ground will have have to suffice. Lark places a calming hand on Yurk's shoulder. The boss is right. We have little choice in the matter. I understand your want for vengeance, and so do I. But we haven't the manpower to seek, seek it right now, and doing so would only get us killed. We're going to do this. We need to first restore our numbers, then I promise we'll hunt those traitors down. Look around at your companions, renewed purpose in each of their eyes as they all nod in agreement. Right then, we'd best travel light. It's a long walk to Andal Andalon. Okay, as your car caravan travels throughout the world, time will progress. Supplies and general upkeep can be expensive. Every day that passes will cost us coin. In the top right corner are navigation controls, allowing you to advance the next day, stop traveling, and adjust the speed of your caravan. Given the situation, we can't afford a long journey. We should make our way to Andalon and rest and regroup. Back we go, very slowly. So we can have a company of up to eight at the moment. Okay, history, that's interesting. According to legend, the city of Andalon was yeah, founded by Andal the Axe. His line ruled over the city until the Midland Civil War, where Eric Andalon died in battle alongside his sons, fighting under the banner of Neris 
uh, Talrun. Talrun? After many long days on the road, you and your companions breathe a collective sigh of relief upon entering the city limits of Andalon. The cities or the streets are bustling with traffic, and though it does seem to be business as usual, you can't help but sense an uneasiness among the people. Yurik seems to pick up on it as well. And with narrowed eyes, he looks up at the sky. These days are growing darker, that's for sure. He gestures towards the crowds. No doubt they're all concerned about the scourge. Can't say I blame them. On the bright on the bright side, there's no shortage of work available to us, but for now, he winces, glimpsing down at his injured leg. We should all we could all do with a few days' rest. Alaric begins to shuffle forward, gesturing ahead with a nod. I believe the inn is this way. With the morning sun shining into your room at the inn, you rise from your bed, pleased to find your body finally free of its many aches. Gathering your belongings, you walk down the creaking stairs to the ground floor, spotting your companions already seated at a table and breaking their fast. Morning, sir. You're looking better, huh? Come. He gestures to the seat beside him with one hand, taking up a spoonful of porridge with the other. Sit. Eat. Across the table, Lark tears off a piece of bread and hands it to you. We were just discussing our next. Lark trails off as a man approaches the table, your previous employer, Caldwin, sporting a puzzled look on his face. I must say, I'm surprised to see you here. No, sorry. I must say, I'm surprised to see you here. I heard about the battle. Heard you were dead, in fact. He slides into a seat opposite you, sp spreading his arms wide. Yet here you are. Heard it from who? Your associate, he looks up, trying to recall the name. Torin was it? Tall bastard, he said. He said your entire company was killed in an ambush, and he was lucky to be alive. Anyway, he brought me the vials, so we concluded our business, and he went on his way. You just believed his story? Truth be told, no. I could tell he was hiding something, but I wasn't about to refuse the man. I suspect he could rip me apart with his bare hands, uh, were he so inclined. Was there anyone else with him? A boy of 15 years? Man scratches at his chin. Had a few companions, from what I saw. None that young, however. Any idea where they were headed? Don't know that either, I'm afraid, but it seemed they were going, each going their separate ways. Alark raises an eye at the piece of information. Probably raises an eyebrow. Retiring, perhaps. They certainly could afford it, having stolen everything from us. So they betrayed you and stole your fortune, did they? Sorry about that, but perhaps we can help each other out. You have a job for us? More of an arrangement. Kelvin leans in closer, placing an elbow on the table. I've been looking to expand my business across Salem. Known world consisting of five regions. But the roads are a dangerous place, as you all know. And I'm in need of a permanent guard. In return, I would offer... I could... Or no, would offer you a discount on all of my wares. Potions, elixirs, and the like. I'm sure they'd be of great use in your line of work. To be clear, I would not interfere with the operation of your company. Of that, you can be sure. In fact, I care not where we travel, so long as we are buyer... There are buyers for me to sell to. He leans back, spreading his hands across the table. So, what do you think? Sounds like a fair proposal. I accept your offer. Kelvin smacks a hand down on the table. Excellent. Then consider me at your service, my friends. And, as I said, where we go is entirely up to you. Lark lifts his head, hand, a single finger raised. There's one problem, however. We simply cannot afford to travel anywhere at the moment. Not to mention we're without carriages and horses. Uh, you've certainly had a rough go of it, huh? He waves a hand. No matter. I can supply both her uh, horses and carriages. Horses and carriages. As for funds, I hear the local vanguard have their hands full at the moment. I suspect you might find some work with them. He leans in close, lowering his voice. Just don't mention my other activities. They would be none too pleased to learn of my vi of the vials in my possession. Thanks for the tip. We'll go and see them. Kelvin raises from his seat, straightening out his tunic. I have preparations to make then. He looks at each of you, nodding farewell. I await you at the gates. Taking a bite from your bread, you look down at uh, look on as Kelvin strides out of the inn. Alaric turns back to you, fingers rubbing at his chin. You know, sir, I was thinking it might be wise to retire the company name. So long as those traitors think us dead, we'll have an easier time rebuilding our numbers. And when we're ready to strike back against them, it'll be us with the upper hand. Yurik grunts approval as he swallows the last of his drink. He's right, I reckon. Best not draw any extra attention to ourselves if we can help it. Any ideas for a name, boss? Suplads has always had a nice ring to it, I thought. Suplads, uh... He pauses, flashing a toothy, toothy grin. I believe that'll soup, uh, soup us well. <laughs> Alright, when visiting a city, you can view the available contracts by clicking on one of the contract banners at the top of the screen. The icon on the banner tells you which faction is offering the contract and completing will increase your reputation with them. We're hardly in a position to be picky right now, so Vanguard job. Cool. We also have some money and some other things, but let's take a look. Uh, let's see. This? Back on your feet. 
Pick up some work for the local Vanguard representative. Even from a distance, you can tell there's a sense of urgency brewing within the Vanguard ga garrison. As you near, a pair of hard-eyed guards order you to halt, their weapons held up to impede you. Behind them, a man in, decorati in a decorative suit of armor, no doubt an officer, takes note of your arrival. With a wave of his hand, orders the two guards to stand down. At ease, soldiers. Let them through! He build them. It's too much reading. I'm starting to lose my tongue. He bids you approach, his eyes fixed on yours. My apologies. Things are rather tense around here, as you can see. He regards the rest of your companions, looking at them up and down. There's something you need. I heard you could use a hand. An understatement, but you've heard correctly. I'm sure you've noticed the day's growing darker as of late. They say the scourge is coming, but in truth, it's already begun. We begin receiving... Uh, we've been receiving reports of void spawn in the area, and we're scrambling to respond to each. The help you can provide is most welcome, and will be rewarded, of course. What do you need us to do? A group of refugees is fleeing from a small village just south of us. I dispatched a unit to aid them, but with the number of void spawn that was reported, I fear their presence won't be enough. I would ask that you travel south, link up with them, and ensure the refugees arrive here safely. He turns to an aide, snapping his fingers and holding out a hand. The aide rummages through their satchel, producing a few papers as they promptly hand over. Oh, which they promptly hand over. The officer briefly glances down at the documents before offering them up to you. These will point you in the right direction. Good luck. He extends a friendly hand. I have no doubt you're suited. I have no doubt you're suited to the task. You can count on us. The officer nods and turns away, striding off to deal with another matter. Lark steps towards you, peering over your shoulder at the report in your hands. Looks like we've got our work cut out for us, sir. But before we part, I suggest hiring some more fresh recruits at the inn. I'm not sure there are more. Th I'm sure there are more than a few capable mer mercenaries available. Okay, so let's go to the inn. Every city has an inn, allows you to rest, buy drinks, or recruit new members. Resting will reduce your roster's fatigue by three. For every night purchased, buying a round will increase their loyalty for a time. The drinking too frequently can re result in adverse effects, and we can also recruit people. Well, I'm assuming we have no fatigue. Okay. So we can also get recruits. And I know you can age out is something. So we have a Pyrolancer, a Huntress, and a Pugilist. A Huntress sounds really useful. Let's see. So, ready for duty, well rested. I'm gonna... Probably get some of those. I did go for a cheaper thing. I'm just going to sign on all of them. I don't know if they have unique traits that change them too much. So I'm not going to bother to look too much. Uh, the other thing is marketplace. What can we do? We can get some better equipment. Extra evasion move and speed. And yeah, I do have a lot of extra money. Which is kind of handy. Um, how do I check inventory? Current roster. Oh, they're still fatigued and injured. Okay, hold up. Okay, admit a patient. Eight days. Oof. Okay. Uh, let's see. So they're they're out for the count. And Bernard is tired. I was really hoping just resting for a couple of days wouldn't be so bad, but it looks like we're kind of... Oh, we do actually have some traits to keep an eye on. Doesn't look like any of them are bad for the most part. Hasty and rash. Speed increased, but critical chance reduced. Keen eye. Oh, 1% critical change. Chance. Uh, for every round of combat. Perception increased by 10%, reduces chance of being ambushed while camping. And cowardly. Oops. Don't know if that's great. Uh, let's see. Affinity. Oh, you can also have, like, friend friends. And you can also give bonuses, which probably help. And we can see their names, too. Ailments, some other things. Weapons. Council, which we can't do. Uh, oh, interesting. So these are upgrades. But we have to get company perks, probably through reputation. So we have tents, which increases our capacity up to 15 eventually. Reduces salary costs up by up to 25%. Increase the rate the loyalty is gained. Increase the travel speed on the overworld by up to 50%. That's pretty good. New recruits start with extra loyalty. Contract limit increased to five at a time. Recovers faster from injuries. 
Uh, clear six days of fatigue. Six days worth of fatigue for every night at the end. And uh, increase gear durability by 35%. What else is this? So this is just our EXP bar, some other statistics, overview, achievements, some other things. So we'll go back to the, this. Considering I get extra money, potentially by a lot. Let's see, sort cost low. I wonder if I can sort rarity. Okay, leftover scrap materials can be sold to most merchants. I might as well do that. So do we have any other rare weapons? Because this is a rare short sword, which seems kind of good. Usable by Guardian. Let's take a look at weapons. What else do we have? Bone Wand. Seems like weapons are worth it. I mean, I don't know. I might as well just kind of buy everything. Lamular of the Coat of Plates. I don't know. Anything that is rare. It's also wood, but I don't know what wood's useful for. Okay, so we're a little low on money. Funds are running low. 333 at the end of the year. Well, that's fine. I don't even know how long we have until the end of the year, but we finished one mission and we're fine. And that'll give us some decent gear to work with. So let's leave the city. Uh, the one guy that's tired will just kind of have to deal. Uh, so current roster. So Astrid is gone. Take a look at him. Gear. Because he's got a traveler staff versus the wand. The wand is slightly better, better accuracy. Okay. Uh, let's see. Close out of this. Who's our next kind of tanky person? Because we've got a pugilist and two pirate lancers. Here's the thing. This guy's probably weaker and has lower stats, so I'm actually gonna give him I'm gonna give the, the weaker characters the better gear for now to keep them alive. Especially this guy, as he seems to have no armor. Uh Alright. Anyway. 13 days to travel. Oh, so that'll cut the fatigue will disappear by the time we get there. Oh, and do they just Rejoin? I guess so. After days spent on the road with no signs of refugees, you begin to lose hope of ever finding them. Glancing sideways at you, referee observes a look of concern on your face. So long as they're stuck in the road, we should be finding them soon. They frown into the distance, one way or another. A bed, a figure suddenly emerges from a patch of trees just off the beaten path. They barrel toward you, frantically waving their arms to gain your attention as more begin to appear behind them. You urge your horse forward, riding out to meet them. Please help us! Their hand points to the, towards the patch of trees from which they came. Our caravan's under attack! You glance in the direction, faint sounds of combat, barely audible over the panicked screams of the refugees. Are the vanguard with you? They are, but they're outnumbered. Esther rides up to your side, narrowed eyes, looking towards the sound of battle. We should hurry. You twist in your seat, signaling the rest of your companions to follow as you charge ahead, past the crowds of refugees and into the fray. Look at and assist the vanguard. You arrive just in time to render aid. Referee and Estrid grapple a demon away from one of the soldiers, cutting it down in the process. The remaining demons are felled in short order. As one of the vanguard soldiers tries to wrench their spear free of the demon's skull, another acknowledges your arrival. Removing his helmet to, and tucking it at his side, he marches across the bloodied grass towards you. Weary grim and, a weary grimace on his face. I take it you've been sent to help. He glances down at the demonic abominations, dark blood oozing from their hacked up bodies. There'll be more of them, of that I'm sure. An officer of Andalon hired us to assist you. That's a relief. He exhales slowly, shaking his head. We're too few to begin with, truth be told. It's a miracle we haven't lost anyone yet. Still, with your help, all these folk might just make it. The man turns at a muffled shot in the distance, floating across the field towards you. Across from you, another vanguard soldier crests a hill, weapon raised in a frantic sprint as he draws near. He comes to an abrupt halt just shy of your position, addressing the man in charge and pointing back with the tip of his spear. Sir, more demons! Fast approaching! Shit. He turns to you as he refits his helmet. You there, go with the refugees. We'll hold off the bastards as long as we can. We'll protect them. Good luck. The soldier nods and slams his visor down. He whips around, drawing his spear and barking orders as his unit. Preparing them to face the enemy and likely their own deaths. Protect the refugees and flee. Lowering his spyglass, Alaric mumbles something under his breath as he frowns in the distant horizon. He turns to you with a shite... The, the slight shake of his head, a troubled look on his face. They're still following, sir. More of them, in fact. At this rate, they're gaining. I suspect they'll be all over us by nightfall. 
He digs around in his satchel and produces a map, unfurling it and carefully tracing a figure along the canvas. There's a cave system not far from here that will take us closer to Andalon and hopefully provide shelter from those demons. A cave? I'd rather stay above ground and get trapped underneath rather than get trapped underneath it. We have no guarantee of safety down there. It's not ideal, but it's a risk we'll have to take. Estrid turns away, grumbling inaudibly as they stomp off. Peering beside you, referee places a gesturing, a reassuring hand on your shoulder and puffs out a sigh. Can't please everyone, sir, but I reckon it's the right choice. We have no idea what awaits us down in those caves, it's true, but we know damn well the danger we face up here. Okay, so select up to four characters when forming a party. It's important to consider the status of each. Well rested, gets more power and EXP. Available, fit and ready for duty, fatigued, less, injured, nope, unavailable, cool. So Bernard is tired, which is unfortunate because there's our storm caller, but I'll live. Um, okay, unable to retreat, back on her feet. So let's bring her because she's got the extra healing. Um, these two, let's probably do this, select provisions. Oh, before entering a dungeon, you'll be able to purchase provisions to bring with you. By default, unused provisions at the end of the dungeon are refunded for 50% of the cost and can be increased further. Two potions, a tool, ale, antidote, or a bandage. Let's do that and then venture forth. Because we'll get our money back by the end of this. Standing alongside the cavern's entrance, you motion at the weary refugees as they file past you, encouraging them to quicken their pace. With everyone inside, you look back towards the plains one last time, frowning at the approach of Void Spawn, now clearly visible to the naked eye. As you enter the depths, a shriek at the front of the column causes a commotion. You push your way through the crowd to see a mutilated animal slumped on the ground. Referee is already down on their knees and examining the wounds. They turn and look up at you, scratching their brow with a puzzled expression. Could, could have been demons, but I can't say for certain. They point to a series of deep lacerations on the creature's body. Not the work of any human, anyway. Regardless, we're not obviously not alone down here. Let's tread carefully, then. Alright, well, I think this is a good stopping point. We've uh, we've got our hook, we've got a lot of other things. I love the pixel art, the combat is nice and crunchy and tactical and whatnot. And I like the different abilities every character has. The one thing I would say, I wish there was a little bit more character customization that let me do some interesting things. Um, I'm a big fan of like really interesting custom cheese builds. And my one worry looking at all of this is many of these abilities are a little kind of flat. You know, it's just extra charges, extra damage. And the one benefit is like knocked back or strike an additional enemy. Like those two are good. And like there's a couple others like blind duration. Like there's things that you can do and kind of build towards. But I always like, uh, oh, what's, a, what's a good example of like uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, I think is kind of the perfect one to bring up as an example. I played a ton of that game. And one of the beautiful parts about it is that you had, like, one or two passive abilities, a reaction ability, and then you could kind of mix and match two different classes or something like that. But I loved being able to customize each character so that they would have, you know, kind of a plethora of, of, of advantages. And so far, it seems like most of the ones in this are kind of statistical. I guess another example I'd give would also be, like, the last spell that, uh, for me, my big worry is that many of the classes are going to be kind of the same. Uh, and so, like, every Pyrolancer is going to be largely the same. Sure, here's your six abilities, just mix and match. Uh, the, I guess the easy way to check would be... Uh, take a look at this guy. I think these are the same. Yeah, Return to Cinder. Because he's still got Blazing Lance and Infertile Pillar, which is what um, our, our lead Lancer guy had. Oh, standing next to a burning enemy or cell increases attack power by 5% per stack. Oh, well, that's kind of neat. But, uh, yeah, either way, I would love to see a greater variety on the characters, even to the point where maybe slightly randomized um, skill or, like, active abilities, but maybe also an equal, like, kind of talent tree right next to it that gives you passives that are just special to the character. I, I don't know what they could be. They could be anything, you know, heavy weapons... Um, mastery he or heavy armor mastery or um, you know just kind of various little perks that makes uh, you know our, our two pugilists completely different beyond just like slight stat differentials. I realize that's more complicated but boy it gives a game so much more identity. That's the one thing. 
But beyond that, it seems like a very, very competent... Oh, I can camp. I'll keep that in mind. Um, but it seems like a very competent mercenary tactical RPG in the same way that, like, Battle Brothers is. But I, I still need to play that game at some point. I, I've heard good things about it, but I've never put the time in. Uh, it also kind of reminds me of Stone Shard and... Oh, what was that one? Urtuk, I believe it was. Uh, I think Urtuk is the one that I kind of bring up in terms of, like, interesting passives, because I remember you could equip weird stuff that would change how a character works. And I really like that. And, to some degree, uh, when I'm talking about, like, customization, if we can get some equipment that actually has really interesting or neat features and effects, that would also solve the problem. I just want a little bit more than just stat bonuses one way or another. Uh, but with all of that said, it's a neat game, and it's only in early access, so who knows where this is going to be. I look forward to seeing how it develops, because it, it's definitely kind of a compelling story. It's not one we haven't heard before or seen before, but at the same time, like, it's a good way of telling it, and I like the presentation, especially from the mercenary company angle. Most games kind of have you as the heroes, as opposed to just, like, a bunch of gritty dudes that are just suffering through it. And possibly saving the world in the end, but it's no, like, chosen one plot. It's mostly just like, these guys did the work, and I like that. Um, but, with all that said, The Iron Oath is available tomorrow on April 19th. And I don't actually know how much it costs, I'm gonna bet it's like 30 bucks. Which seems fair, it very much seems like the kind of game that, if you were looking at this video and you were wondering, like, should I pick this up, should I not? I'd say, maybe or wait. Because uh, it seems like there's a fair bit of content available in the game at the moment, but there are some hard limits and you know on abilities, and I'm sure you're going to run out of missions after uh, a bit. But this seems like the kind of game that you pick up now if you're like really craving for something similar, or come back for the 1.0 when it's done. And if the game gets enough support, who knows? We might even get some sick DLC along the way. But with all of that said, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new indie games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons of them to check out. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.